Are you ready for the ultimate bikepacking weekend adventure? Join us for an unforgettable self-supported bikepacking trip through Southwest Virginia. The Grayson Gravel Pie Bikepacking Adventure travels along the Virginia Creeper Trail, the beautiful gravel roads of Grayson County, Virginia, and the New River Trail. All lodging and camping arrangements are included, along with daily routes and guides riding along with you. This self-supported adventure offers resupply opportunities every 20 miles for your food and water needs. Find out more at GravelTravelDirt.com. You're listening to Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. I'm Joey. I'm Brian. And I'm Jess. And I'm Pat. Everybody, welcome to episode 196 of Mid-Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt. If you're new here, this is the podcast where we talk about gravel bikes, adventure biking, bike packing, bike camping, racing bikes on the gravel up in Pennsylvania tonight is what we're going to talk about. Or just playing bikes. Joining us tonight, Uncle Pat. We're going to officially refer to you now as Uncle, Uncle Pat. Uncle Pat, I've had yeah, Multiple people come back to me like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uncle Pat from Lulakawaika Hundo, Crosscut Dirty Metric, and a brand new event that he's going to introduce us to this evening, Staruka Crossing. Welcome, Pat. Uh, thanks, guys, uh, uh, and, and Jess. Uh, I, pre- I appreciate it. I always love uh, being on. So thanks, guys. I feel like we've seen a lot of you lately. With like, we saw you at Unpay. It's 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 a fall it's, season. It's the, it's fall, the fall it's season. We all see the- all of our Pennsylvania friends in the fall. It's like straight through Philly Bike Expo, and it's just like. Hold on, I'm gonna apologize, Joey. Did I talk over you? No. no. I don't oh, think okay. so. What have you guys? Oh, you guys, is that no. a tip thing? I never, I never, no, I was just saying, I thought I would talked over him and okay. I apologize. I'm going to hang out with Pat in June. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know that we're going to, I was just looking at the dates for Staruka and it's working out really nice for me. Yes. So cool. I'm pretty excited about that. I know that it's a problematic thing for you, Joe. No, that, that weekend's right. appropriate. The following weekend is ah, a busy weekend for ah, Joey. Awesome. Well, before we get started, I got a couple of people to thank salt stick and Joe J bars. We could do it every week, but salt stick helps athletes maintain performance by replacing a full spectrum of electrolytes lost through sweat in a form and quantity. The body can absorb. I um, definitely love their electrolyte juice or water. It's not juice. I'm sorry. It's like a powder going in the water. Absolutely loved it. Had it this weekend. My car does too. It's all over the back of it. (laughs) Joey says my Coke was all over the backseat of his car. (laughs) Right alongside salt stick. JoJ Bars brings together the right balance of whole food ingredients for sustainable energy, including optimal levels of healthy fats and carbohydrates and nut-based proteins. Um, I got their um, coffee one, their espresso one. Uh-huh. Chef kiss. Like, oh. amazing. Ooh, like, chef kiss. I love the coffee flavoring taste, uh, so it was really good. Well, friends, either go to either the Salt Stick website or the JoJ website. When you reach checkout, use the code LOVEYOUBODY. Take 20% off all your items. I'm going to put links to that and that code in the show notes. Um, Cutaway USA, Philip offers premium cycling, cycling. Um, yeah, hard words are hard sometimes, Joey. Cutaway USA offers premium cycling apparel okay, born in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Cutaway is an industry leader using innovative fabrics combined with clean, bold designs. Make sure to visit their website at cutawayusa.com to see all the goods. And when you reach the checkout there... Use the code GTD20 to take 20% off of your entire order. And you would only really need that like for the next week if you miss the uh, Thanksgiving Day, Black Friday sale because he's offering 20% off everything right now. So I um, know that because of my Instagram reels, I need more than one Mountain Mike jersey. Okay. Because I only wear my Dirty Kitten one because I love the Dirty Kitten people so much. So I want to tell you, I've been loving your reels. Thank you. They've been fun to watch. Thanks. They always have a nice message. Yeah. And they're very authentic. Joey always has like a funny face in them. He's like, yeah. <laughs> it's been fun to watch. I was watching. It. I saw Joey's flow in the one today. His, his hair flow. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it, but Jess, it was, it was, it was yeah. good. It's, so, folks, if you don't know, Joey has trimmed up the beard, which I encouraged him to do for a very long time. I did it all because of Ryan. It's, it's trimmed up really nice and tight and neat, and the hair is long. You, you're looking quite handsome. In fact... Um, I was I was sitting there looking at it the other day, and Carrie saw one of those pictures of you, and she was like, oh, "Joey looks so good." Uh, so, thank you. My um, Joey's like it. playoff hockey right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, unpaved was like the uh, um, the final straw for the long beard. 
Yeah. I shaved it the day we got home. Yeah. The beard. Well, you didn't shave it. You just trimmed it up. I trimmed it up. Trimmed and then up. I retrimmed it recently. My um, mother does not like Joey's long hair or long beard. Well, she could suck it. So, yeah. That's just the Joey way. Joey referred to her as the Jersey Devil yesterday. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just say we're going to the Pine Barren. Oh, Diablo. There we go. Diablo, Diablo. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to start. I just got the shipping notica- notification today for the new t shirts that are coming out. I got those OD green ones with, uh, with the do good, be nice, go slow, respect others. Um, those, I got the shipping notification, but I have not put those into the storefront yet because it's a new company that I'm working with. And I want to make sure that the quality of the t-shirt is up to my standards before I begin to sell them. You have standards. I do have standards. And if those t-shirts. Only for his t-shirts though. That's probably about the best. That's probably, that's probably where I have my highest (laughs) standards with the t-shirts. Since someone else is on air and I can't get yelled at. Um, I don't like the neck of the new High Life shirts. This is no? like a, this is for like I'm a bigger guy. Okay, and I don't know why. I like a nice like thick. You might have got right one here, that's got a weird like, cut to it then, because I don't have that problem with mine. I feel like it kind of if you sweat at all, it gets a little saggy. Okay, okay. Well, it's good feedback, I, Joey. I, th- I think it's because of the giant print, and I, I love the logo. I don't the giant print. I think drags the neck down because it's so because it's so much heavy ink. Yeah, I agree. Uh, sorry I agree. to say that on the air. That's okay. But good I forgot feedback. to tell you, so now it's documented. Good feedback is good feedback. Yeah. And and I would agree. I think that the 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 way that that t-shirt was made as opposed to being screen printed with the digital print. Oh, crap. It's, it's very, very heavy. Now, the new ones are coming out there one color, so I believe they're simple screen printed black. <laughs> oh, What's so. the matter, Joey? All right. I have a little alcohol. We're talking. I'm doing stuff. I accidentally ordered a jersey from Cutaway to see if our code would work. <laughs> and now I'm at the checkout where it says, like, thanks. For- <laughs> Son of a... I got a text fill up. Accidental ordering. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> can't even fit into this jersey. <laughs> What fun you have! This yeah. this is why your credit card bill so high, Jess. Is just drunk ordering by uh, Joey. Real quick, funny story is I was doing employee purchase order through Specialized, which is through Specialized dot com now. Uh huh. And they charged just like six. I had like a thirteen hundred dollar charge for a helmet and a pair of shoes. Well, that took a week stuff. to get all that back. Did they hold on to your money and and use the interest to I like just got it on the purchase of a new store or yeah, something? Basically, that's <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I also want to thank everybody that bought has bought sticker packs. With the gravel seasoning and the uh, gravel life, and um, I'm going to put those new T-shirts on the storefront as soon as I give the QC to the uh, to the T-shirt itself. Jess, what's going on in your world? Um. Well, since I, Joey just got up and walked Joey away, Joey just got up and walked away. But he's he got, lives he, my life every day, so he's it's managing okay. Blake. He's managing. Yeah, he is managing Blake. Um, we had two days of school this week. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We are going mountain biking in Jersey. Nice on Thursday. We will on, see Sal out there. You're gonna um, see Sal. But he always rides a layer where we ride. Yeah. Nice. So nice. we'll be doing that Thursday morning. Okay. Um, oh, Turkey Day morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yep. Um, we're leaving Friday, af- like right after breakfast, or maybe even when Blake gets up. So okay. um, it's a short trip. It's not a long trip. No hush money ride for us. No hush money. Yeah. Okay. We um, the dog is the hardest thing to get Deciding managed. Yeah. On that. Otherwise, yeah. we have to leave him, drive out to Lancaster, and then drive back to Jersey, and then I have to drive home. That's tough. Yeah. That's yeah. really tough. And then you know, so just dog. Things, um, and then Saturday I have my fundraiser for St. Jude, so I'm super excited about that. It's at Borden Brush in Lettertown. You know, it's the live, laugh, love stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the painting of the things. It's just yeah. you go and you drink wine and you paint something. Yeah, I don't yeah. drink wine, so no. but yes, I do go paint stuff. Yeah, that thing right there is me. Uh, from yeah, I know. From... That, and that's actually really nice. Thank you. Got a nice Thank little you. welcome to our home thing. Yeah. And, uh, that's that's very nice. Thank I, you. I, I like that very much. Now, um, do you want to talk about what we did last weekend? Uh, well, that's Joey's thing. Let Joey that talk was about Joey's that? thing. Okay. So, well, Joey, why don't you go ahead and talk about that? Because I had a I had a fantastic time, and I think you did too. I was like, forming an email to colorway about my <laughs> jersey. I won't fit into. Um, 
Yeah, so I teamed up with Dan, who runs Jubilee Fermentations, which is a local brewery uh, of locally sourced, low alcohol percentage beer. Mm-hmm. Um, Delicious, down, by the way. Down in St. Mary's County. Um, we have been talking about this for a while. Dan Dan heard about the podcast, got to Lori anyway. Um, and we got... We put our heads together and came up with our event this weekend, which was the inaugural two and a half mile gravel and single track. Bring any bike minus a road bike and it'll work. Um, so very accepting of everyone. Uh, we probably one of the best settings you can find, I think, mm. down here on mm-hmm. the creek, on the water, uh, fields, sunset, uh, gravel, and just did an hour and 15, 20 minutes of riding and then. Everyone brought food. I brought like 30 pounds of pulled pork. Lori brought mac and cheese. Everyone made desserts. Someone brought frozen shrimp. They were still <laughs> frozen, but um, everyone socialized. The beer is great because that, that's good post ride, low count beer. Oh, I love I I really like a low alcohol content beer. You know, it's not like, um, you know, Grindoro or Croatan where we're sleeping there. So you can just go balls to the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got to drive home. So. That was great. We had a lot of fun. We had a nice fire to close out the evening. Everyone was peaceful. No one got hurt. 50 plus people showed up. Yeah, that was a great number. It was beautiful. Driving in, I kept looking at the cars and I was like, I was like, that, that that's all here for this? Yeah. This yeah, event? it was pretty awesome. Was pretty I worked awesome a event. little bit for that. And there were kids there riding kids by. It, it was great. so cool. Oh, it, it, I, I was riding. I did the first loop. I only yeah. did the one loop. I did the first loop and, um, I, I was commenting. I think Calvin was in front of me. I was commenting. It's like I felt like a twelve year old riding my bike through the woods, like behind the house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it just was like this little trail that they'd cut through this back of the farm and it yeah, rode down by awesome. the water. It was. And I have my swanky ass mountain bike I rode, and then I got on my hoopty single speed, and I had more fun on the single speed. Did you really? It was just like meant for. Yeah. It was just fun. Yeah, it was. And and, and that the trail as it gets it, yeah. as it gets worn in, that's going to be a fun little trail. Yeah. For running, for just going down and riding your bike with your kids or something on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Oh, and we'll have actual perfect. events out of it, but we wanted to see how uh, how it went. Perfect. It was perfect. It was uh, great. We had a fire afterwards, you know, just bullshitting around. So yep. it was really nice. Uh, yes, that kind of sums that up. Uh, right on the shop. Shop. Uh, we are now a Rodeo Labs dealer. Bum, nice. Bum. Congratulations. I know Uncle Pat likes Woo-hoo. his. Yeah, right? So now my big toss up is like, oh god, I've been here, lo- here comes a new bike, ready for it, Jess. Just fr- no, my dilemma is Yeah, it's I wouldn't get rid of my Libre frame. I would just build the flanimal mm-hmm. up and ride it. Flat bar, flanimal. Sounds I, like a good idea, Joey. Oh, I love the idea. I thought about it. I was gonna do a flat bar Kona Sutra frame. Um, but you know, flat bar uh, Matt Hawkins from Ridge Supply has a flat bar flanimal. Yep. And it is beautiful. And he has like yep. patina. Fr- I don't know what they did to patina it. <clears throat> it is mm-hmm. gorgeous. Can I can I give you a suggestion for unpaved next year? Because I know you've talked about riding all these different bikes. Why don't you see if you can talk to Dave or somebody and stage a different bike at a different rest stop <laughs> and do like the single speed for one piece, do the Libre sure, for another I, piece? I could do that. You could do that. You could do that. I think you should do that. Actually, what's nice is because the flannel has sliding dropouts is that could single speed up too. Are we taking over under bets on how long it takes Joey to say I'm ordering a radio lab bike? I don't think he'll say that. I think it'll just show up. Okay. Uh, okay. So Pat has been riding his for a while. Yeah, I love my I love my radio labs. Um, yeah. It's kind of a it's kind of a tank, uh, but it's like tank. I, I told the guys from Radio Labs, um, it's a tank in the most beautiful way of saying so because it's also like. It's statically, it feels like it's a heavy bike, right? And they know it is a steel bike with carbonium parts on it. Um, but it rides like a feather and it just like cruises through everything and takes takes a beaten takes a lick of on ticking. That's a great combination. When you yeah. can say a bike ride light, but rides light, but takes the abuse, that's that's like whew, yeah. That's that's hard to beat. And I yeah. I've been nice. missing a steel bike like that since my Sequoia. Yeah. So uh, we are getting a new bike. Am I, I never said we had to... Sorry. Also. <laughs> um, 
No, well, it's, it's almost like it's almost Jerry. Like you, you really you have to since you're bringing the rodeo labs in. <laughs> you, you need to have somebody local that's yeah. kind of riding that bike. I mean, if it's not if it's not you, then maybe it should be me. I don't know. You are more know. than yeah. welcome to buy a new bike. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what Jess says after her Christmas present. Um, the, uh, the the thing that stuck with me in my head when I was talking to Matt at Philly, and he was. Definitely being a really good salesman mm-hmm. uh, is a bike like a rodeo labs, and I totally understand this because I've built people's bikes. Is you don't like you don't take a trek or a special you don't like love a trek or a specialized like you do like your Otso mm-hmm. or Pat might like his rodeo labs like yep. you just don't do that. Yep. There's there's a there's a chore there's there's a love affair like borderlining on creepy with me and my work. And there's no doubt about it. And, so, and it's never felt that for any other. My way. only caveat is that is me and my Libre. Yeah. That's the only thing that's held me up from hitting submit already. Yeah. Because it could, it might be something like Pat was talking about a really cool flat bar. Well, that would be unique Animal. and different. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm telling you the, the, the tri bike. Don't say tri bike. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that to Pat either. <laughs> Try bike effort and unbeaved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's new to the store. It's trying to elevate that next level metal option or carbon because yeah. the new uh, trail donkey is pretty sweet. Yeah, those are nice looking bikes. Not, not for a guy like me, but yeah. That's nice, nice looking bikes. Um, Anything else? I, th- I think that's about it. Oh. Um, yeah, I ordered a new cutaway jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also got a little Travis Love pile. Oh yeah! Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Talk about that, Travis. Yeah, that, his little love pile and this beer I'm drinking got me into buying the jersey. <laughs> um, I don't like you know like I send like an email like two emails every day about like being sponsored athlete and all these things, mm-hmm. but like getting packages like that delivered to my door is like the coolest thing ever. That's nice. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes. Like you know like. Travis, Travis is if you don't know Travis Olson from Rumpet Grusk, he always is so generous with us and sends us. A little bit of Grusk love about this time of year. Um, and we got some beers. We got some candies. I think you got some Rice Krispie treats. Yeah, right? because I stole his by uh-huh. accident. I yeah. thought it was for everybody. He just but... knows how much you love them now. I know. I so... do. I eat a Rice Krispie treat every ride now. Nice. And uh, and sweatshirts. So so we got a little bit of that. So thank you, Travis, for yep. all of that. Joe, you want to jump in Strava Club? Yeah, sorry. I'm still formatting. All right. Strava.com forward slash clubs forward slash gravel travel dirt if you want to join because we're still at 880. Um, I need to grow that stash. Yeah. All right. We're uh, number one is Rob Loafman. I picked that out because Loafman sounds like a cool name. It does sound uh, like Raleigh, cool. North Carolina, with one fifty point four. Jonathan Paul from Verona, Pennsylvania, with one thirty one point six, and David Ingram from Wilmington, North Carolina, with ninety five. That is below a hundred. Wow. Point four five because you only needed ninety four point one, and he was ninety nine. I couldn't pronounce the hundred persons person's <laughs> name. It was totally like you, uh, you, you know, somewhere over in Europe. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Uh, holding steady, what eight eighty? Is that the number? Yeah, okay. eight eighty eight. No, eight eighty. Never mind, eight eighty. Sorry, 880. friend. Eight eighty eight would be a pretty. I just cool bought you eight random new friends that you never even know you met. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump into all this stuff. stuff. Pat's been sitting here very patiently waiting for us to just wind all of that down so we can talk about the stuff that he wants to talk about. Um, Pat, cross cut, dirty metric, Lou like a white hundo, and then Staruka crossing, or if you're from the area, you might call it Strucka. We were talk- having that little conversation beforehand. Which one do you want to start with? Uh, well, I guess the granddaddy is, is, is Lulaka, right? So, I mean, everyone, well, not everyone, some people have heard of Lulaka, and we're heading into our 10th ride uh, in our 11th year. So I guess Lulaka we could start with. Can Can I take a quick break? Sure. Can you, how much of a pain in the butt would it be for you to go back to, like, one of our first few episodes where we tried to pronounce that? Oh, I could find that. <laughs> I could find that. Just put it in real quick. We, we got schooled so badly on how to pronounce things. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and rightly so. That one particular, right, rightly so, because we did struggle with Lou like a white hundo. Yes. Anyway, but you still say white. Uh, you still say Lou like a white uh, instead of white but that's okay. Lou like a white Ooh, he's still schooling you. Oh, and that's it's true though because it's Wyoming County, right? Wicomico. It's Wy. It's Wyoming County. You you often put Wyoming and and, and uh, Wyoming and Wycoming together, and I love it. <laughs> 
because like, it's, it's, cause you say it, I'm like, oh, he's trying. Um, Try so like hard. Lycoming <laughs> like oh. County and Wyoming County are near each other. So, but Wycoming County does not exist. We do have Wicomico down here. Well, there you go. Well, there's no excuse. Yeah, no, there's no, no excuse. excuse. There's no excuse for me. I need to learn. This oh no, I would. Me. I'm sure I would jack up, like especially Eastern Shore words. I would totally jack those up. <laughs> yeah. So Wicomico <laughs> County was um, where I did my graduate work, um, but it's and we call it. Well, I used to call it Wicomico uh, because that's how, like, I like. She's would, a math teacher, not an English. Read it. Major. I'd be like, "Oh, I guess I'm going to go to Wicomico <laughs> County tonight." Like, you know, like, what am I doing down there? Um, and then my professor was the superintendent of schools there, and he was like, "That is not how we pronounce it." And I'm like, "Okay, whatever." Like, <laughs> you do you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tenth year for Lou Laka Wico Hundo. Tenth. Very good. Tenth ride, eleventh year because 11th you know year. there was that was one. There was that one funny year, right? There's that one, one not so funny year in there. Um, so uh, yeah, we're a COVID year we missed. So this is the a tenth ride, but the eleventh year. Got so, it. Of course, make it complicated, right? Uh, so so yeah, we're, in, we're, in, we're into this this upcoming year coming up here in April twenty third uh, of twenty twenty three. Uh, we will uh, roll off on uh, the the new Lulakawaika Honda. Now, is it a new route? Is that is the route changed up? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. So I, I put in a few of the classic bits uh, that people people know. We do those every year, but I also went back to year one, two, and maybe three, and put in a couple of those spots uh, that are from the original route uh, to kind of show them where we used to go versus where we go now. You know, so some people will be brand new to, and, and I kind of want to see now that we've grown a little bit, see what people feel about the new route, and maybe they don't even know that this isn't the way we always go. Um, but so I wanted to kind of give an, uh, an homage to the rides from ten, nine and ten years ago, uh, but also roll with uh, the classics that people love. So you know, a lot of the same stuff will be there, just you know, might be might change a little bit. Right. Um, but the big, but the biggest change, and I, I, I'm I'm so excited to talk about this. Is that we are now, and it's it's actually kind of because of you guys a little bit. Um, uh-huh. We're starting in downtown Pittston, uh, where we've never done that before, uh, and we've partnered with uh, the Main Street Partnership of Pittston to bring our party to downtown. Uh, and it's kind of, you know, I've told Father Dave that it's kind of uh, kind of unpaved junior, where we're going to have similar kind of style, like a party the day before and the Saturday with uh, vendors and music and like all those other stuff. Uh, and then all of our local uh, restaurants and bars and, and all that stuff is all going to be activated and, and they're going to know that we are there and you're going to know they're there and we're going to give like maps of town and stuff like that. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome. And uh, cool. it's kind of be, kind of because of you guys a little bit is like, you know, talking about how you love the day before stuff, you know, like, and like the whole weekend vibe. And I'm like, let's yes. make our, we always had a weekend vibe, but I'm like, let's make this more of a weekend vibe. So I'm really excited working with, we're working with the folks at downtown Pittston and, you know, my, my funny little bike ride, I'm sitting talking to the mayor of town at breakfast about this goofy bike ride and trying to explain the whole thing to him. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been pretty cool working with, working with town. Well, I, I have just added April 23rd as a blacked out date for my calendar. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. I'm we wanna, and cool. And uh, I mean, we'll talk another time, but I'm thinking there's also a possibility of a, of a live, of a live podcast that we can pull that out. Oh yeah. So. We do that in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yes, sir. Nice. Well, yes. it is my turn, and April twenty third is my husband's birthday weekend. So What's your husband's birthday? April twenty fourth. So let's so go guess. Yeah. So that's excellent because my mom's is also that weekend. My mom's birthday, right? So uh, my mom, my dad, and uh, were, were had their birthday that week, and it was their anniversary on the day after. So yeah, they're we're we're all about celebrating. We've had we've had birthday cake for my mom at the Laka multiple times. Now. There you go, Joey. There you there go. It is. There it is. Yes. So we okay. don't know, but we are fellow, are another uh, member of the podcast. They have their ride that weekend too. So we are not sure that Joey and no. Jess, if we are dividing and conquering, like what we are doing. Okay. I offered to divide and conquer right off the bat and I got yelled at. Well, you didn't. What ride, is, yeah, what ride, what ride is, is that? Dirty Kitten. Oh, no. that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. 
Well, I, I think dividing and conquering might be a good way to go. Is it, I, I like is it. it. Is it Saturday, Sunday? Are there, is there a Saturday? There's a Saturday. You should do a double up. Oh, oh my balls. God. Double up. Double up. Double up. Tell you what, double I would up. double up. I could only do 20. I only have to do 20 miles at 30 Kitten. I'll double up. I would volunteer so, to double up. Here's some many, Mary. But many people have doubled up with Raspatista. Oh, um, yeah. And that. And that's like a hike. That's that's like a five hour drive in between the two. But yeah, there's this year Rasputista is the week after. But yeah, people have doubled up with that. So I'd be totally down with doubling up with with Dirty Kid. So high five up. to those guys. But I'll yeah, totally up. down. Yeah. Good because I don't know how to put my own air in my tire still. So I, it's always <laughs> oh, like God. a really. It's always like who's gonna put Jess's hair in her tire? Oh, yeah, I mean his. I mean Lulaka is my birthday. Yeah, a- April twenty fourth is the Sunday. Oh man, that. So- could- that would be a double fun up, weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we got, we went out there Friday night, slept, woke up there, did the first heat, and then left. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That would be, a be fun just weekend. a time to party. That would, that would be a fun weekend. That would be an awesome weekend. Yeah. That would yeah. be really fun. Okay. I, I, I'm in for that. I'm in for that. So. Yeah. It's not far. I think if they're doing Dirty Kitten, where I think they are, where they're, where they're from, Rapid you uh, drive straight up 15 or 81 and you get right to Pittsburgh score yeah i'm down for that i'm down for that we'll make a t-shirt for so that. let's talk about your elevation so like flat <laughs> rolling like what are we talking here pat <laughs> so let's talk about roots uh we we added a uh because we're working on on our inclusivity and we're trying to get gravel to all uh and we want no not everyone wants to bite off a hundred or a metric or a 35 um we're we have a 40 uh, which is great for families, which is you know great for new riders and great for people who just want to go and kick it for a little while and come back and be able to hang out the rest of the day. Yeah, right? they don't they're not trying to you know similar to what Unpaid does, but this is going to be a little more you know you're out there you're not just on a rail trail you're out you're out there doing some doing some real riding you know as far as like getting out into there's 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 a couple of good hills out there on that forty but it gets you out there um, and gets you the real feel kind of lets you dip your toe in. And, uh, you know, kind of challenge yourself. Challenge by choice is what we've been doing for years. So um, having that 40, 40 metric, 75, and 100 uh, is all kind of the mix. So for the 100, just to answer your question fully, um, it's between 8,500 feet to almost 10,000 feet, uh, depending on the computer. Uh, so we've seen, we've seen the, the gamut of that. Uh, so, you know, marketing-wise, we say it's two vertical miles. Uh, but it's a little less than that. And now reg- it is, registration is open for that, right? Yeah, registration is open. We've changed it up a little bit. We just we opened it, and like, you know, we're sick of the of the race to register. Uh, we think that's that's a bad part of what we do, and we were part of that for many years. And it, it's nice to be able to say registration is open on this date, and like people all register register, and it's a cool thing, and they all talk about it, or whatever. But like, we don't need to do that anymore, which is a good thing. But also the race to register annoys the crap out of people. Like one, you got to have money in your account that will cover that. And people don't always have that. And two, you, if you don't get in, people are like, oh, I didn't get in through the lack. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. And like, why, why should we put people in that situation? So registration is open, uh, jump in there. And, uh, and because of our partnership with, with Pittston, uh, we're able to offer more spots this year. So we're going to do a little more uh, activation with our, our, um, um volunteers uh from the city of pittston and also we've been working with the keystone mountain bike club which is the um uh, youth mountain bike club in the area that does uh, nika stuff we've been working with them and last year they we had all kids and and adults out uh, volunteering so by building our volunteer crew we're able to offer more people more spots now you you've um you you've done a lot with with Pickle, right? With with um, did I get the acronym right? Pickle is the yep. pickle is correct. Yeah, pickle and yep. and that is there's going to be that represent. Pickle will be represented across all of the events. Is there going to have some kind of presence or some sort of? Will there be pickle kids? Yeah, there? Uh, yeah. I mean, we we always so where where the ride happens is where the Keystone team is based, and I have you know made a made a pledge to the Keystone team that I I want them to never have to worry about anything, and I don't necessarily care how they use it, use the money, but they're volunteers. I make a large donation because of the, the volunteer work that they do. And we already did. Uh, we do uh, Bucks for Bikes, which every event promoter, in my opinion, should be doing, which it's $1 goes to uh, goes to Pickle uh, for every registration. 
so that's already that's already done as soon as you need to register um and that's on my that's on my side um and then you know we encourage people to to donate to pickle but we've been we've been donating pickle forever as far as different ways but having the kids out there definitely shows off a different side of, of what pickle does and also lets the kids see a little bit about event promotion i've had a couple kids last year who were literally involved from painting the road to picking stuff out of my storage locker to putting it all back together and you know trying to train some of the kids to like this is how you do this. this is how you run a business this is how you do you know uh, you can still stay in the bike industry after pickle and you can you know you can make a career out of the bike industry and this is sometimes it's how you learn you know is <laughs> working at, at, at midnight filling a storage locker is <laughs> sometimes how you learn how you learn how to networking. work in the bike industry it's networking and yeah. meeting people and you know showing that yep. worth ethic, work ethic and yeah it's the way it's done um, yeah, so so I'm on the board of directors of Pickle. Uh, I'm one of the founders of the league, but now I've retired from my former position, uh, and now I'm uh, on the board of directors with with Liz, who we had them last week, and some other awesome people. Cool. Tell tell me a little bit about Crosscut Dirty Metric. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Crosscut Dirty Metric is uh, we, we I, I've called it the North Edition, but some people like forgot about as far as we used to be. We used to be outside of Philly, but now it's in uh, Tunkhannock, PA. Uh, this year we're gonna be at Camp Lackawanna, uh, which is on uh, I'll give you another. I'll give you another term here, here, Brian, to to worry about. We're going to be on the Vosburg Neck, uh, is where is where we start the ride. The Vosburg Neck is uh, a, a section of the Susquehanna that has amazing fishing because it's the neck of the river. It's where the Ooh. river kind of makes this big, big old swing around, and they call it the Vosburg Neck. It's like where this section of land sticks out into the river. It's beautiful uh, up on the up on the Susquehanna near Tonkanic. Um, but the CrossCut Dirty Metric Century is in June. It's the Saturday before uh, Father's Day. And I think we're going to keep it there. Um, you know, so come on out. Um, the CrossCut it's a it's a metric because it's hot in June usually. Uh, so and, and you know it's uh, yeah. it's we don't need I don't need you going 100 miles in, in in middle of June or late June even in Northeastern PA. That's not a time to do that. Um, so we, that's why we keep it only at the metric. So we do a 30, uh, 50, and a, and, a, and a metric 62 on that and that one instead of having tacos like lulaka has this one has the pizza barn uh mid, about midway on, on the route uh where we get some pizza uh right in the middle of the ride we also have other stuff if people don't like pizza in the middle of the ride which we totally understand but um yeah crosscuts crosscuts beautiful I, I love it up there we go through uh town called mahoopany i'm trying to get joey up there to go to mahoopany and go do some fly fishing uh because yeah the mahoopany creek is one of the most beautiful fly fishing spots in the world um and it's actually believe it or not not very far from where uh grindero happens uh it's it's actually probably only like 20 30 miles from from um from where grindero goes on uh, it's just down, it's yeah it's be- it's beautiful out there so imagine all that and just you know some this just trout this trout uh sorry trout creek is like the trout creek uh <laughs> if you picture one this is this is what you're looking at is is the Mahoopany creek uh, this, so we go around this is all ahead. i i think it, it it all really demonstrates why Joey has fallen in love with Pennsylvania. I mean, oh yeah, I don't all, yeah, all this I mean, stuff. Yeah, big 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 hills, nice nice bike rides, and and there's a there's there are trout streams everywhere. I mean, everywhere is a, is a tributary to the Susquehanna or the Delaware, and they all have these little tiny brooks that are, you know, trout fishing paradise. Sounds magic. Yeah, yeah. sounds magic. Now I've yeah. heard I've heard that Crosscut and Lulaca. Are, are very challenging courses. I've heard that from multiple people. That they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. They, they are. Uh, there is no no doubt. Even uh, you know Father Dave and Celine and uh, and a few others of of uh, that you know we we often ride with did did the new version of Crosscut last year. And Celine, my favorite term was Celine said uh, Crosscut is front heavy, <laughs> and that means there was a lot of climbing right out of the gate. And Father Dave would say uh, that he it was the only ride that he ever walked within the first mile, um, wow. which is true because we, we start from the river's, ed- the river's edge and go directly up. But that shouldn't stop you because it's only the first mile, right? So, and he just wasn't in the right gear. Okay. This yep. year, I think I'll... Anybody can walk give, a mile. Yeah, anybody can walk yeah. a mile. That's yeah. Well, he didn't walk the whole mile. He had to walk within the first mile. So he had a, uh, I didn't tell anyone to warm up. <laughs> I kind of forgot that part <laughs> that like the first, the first hill is directly up. So I told like no one warmed up at all and they turned left and saw a wall. Uh, and they, uh, they, 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 they struggled, but then they, uh, they wrote it out. We might change the course a little bit this year. We still have to leave. We still have to leave from the river's edge because it's beautiful. It's, it, I call it the best start line cycling. Um, cause it's, you know, right on the edge. There's nothing around you. It's 
what everyone dreams of as far as like a gravel ride. You start on a gravel road on, you know, in the middle of nowhere at, at, at this year at the, uh, at the, at the, at the, um, the camp to be beautiful. Uh, and you, and you go straight up for uh, a little bit and then you're cruising through Northeastern PA. Just turned on terrain on Google from the, okay. from the <laughs> start line. <laughs> Joey's looking at the maps and he's, he's turned on the terrain system. Holy cow. <laughs> and he just turned his computer yeah. and showed it to me. <laughs> we all pucker, <laughs> we all pucker just a little bit. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The- uh, no, it's, it's, it's definitely no joke. I mean, it's, and that's why I don't want to do a hundred out of there. I mean, there's, there's no, there's no easy way around it. When I tell you there's, Anytime that anyone Tom anyone ever tells you there's a beautiful uh, uh, trout fishing stream, that means there's giant hills around it because that's the only way the water goes downhill, right? Like mm, so, yeah. that every yeah. every beautiful every beautiful river has a bunch of mountains all around it. So, well, let's what's going on with this new one, Staruka Crossing? Um, yeah, you were you were promoting this pretty heavy up at Unpaved. We saw a lot you were doing, and you're doing. I even I think I messaged you. Um, after, after either unpaved or Philly bike expo, I was like, man, you, you are crack of the week. There was kind of weak. Um, <laughs> like a man on a mission. Yeah, man. I, I, so I, I did, like I said, I, I left my position with, with pickle to, to really work on the promotion side. And I, uh, I, I love this work. I love the work I was doing there, but I really want to kind of focus on this. And I think I've got a little bit more time and energy in my, in my life, you know, for a little while now before I get a little older and I want to see how this can go. And, uh, and I think there's also, uh, some great, so there's, there, there will always be another route to discover, right? There's always going to be another ride, another place to go. And I really have a dream of making where I grew up, Northeastern Pennsylvania into, uh, into an outdoors, an outdoors person's paradise. Uh, it already is. And I just want more people to know about it. Oh, and yes. that's, you know, that's part of my partnership with Pittston is like just showing off like this f- formerly mine scarred town that time forgot and back in the 70s when coal mining left is a great home base for your outdoor adventure if you're a hunter if you're a skier snowboarder cyclist hiker photographer whatever it may be northeastern pennsylvania is kind of amazing and i and i want everyone to know that and i get i get the opportunity to do that uh through this promotion and so if i get people to go there and people to spend money in my in the community i grew up in uh, with my friends and with my family and, and those sorts of people, that's fantastic, right? It's like everyone wins. And if you go out and you then decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to go on vacation back up to the Scranton area and I'm going to go ride my bike. Great. And I'm going to buy some land up there. I really want to, I think I might want to move up there when I retire. That's amazing. And, that, and that's really what I want to do. And I have the next, you know, next few years while I still feel young and ready to roll to make it happen. So uh, that's why I've been kind of pushing it to, to, make, to make it happen and get people up there. It's mm-hmm. Northeastern Pennsylvania is beautiful. Will all of that though eventually lead to like a Yellowstone episode? Oh, from, like, Northeastern <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, I, I, maybe, maybe. But we'll we'll, no, it we'll sounds, see. It sounds great. It does. It really does. We'll we'll be fortunate if we have the embarrassment of riches that we have too many people visiting. <laughs> I, I I have done my job. I will apologize, but I think all the all the locals up there will be perfectly fine with all the, all the money they're sitting on oh, from all their, yeah. you know, what yeah. they. <laughs> so you could do that uh, with. You know, um, Donnie and the Pine Creek Valley. He could be like mm-hmm. that. Could yeah. be Yellowstone. I mean, that, yeah, that whole that whole region is is just totally. It's not as untapped. People know about it, obviously. Like people, you know, I, <laughs> I was listening to Rick Ross here today, and he said I want to take my mom to the Poconos, and I was like, yes, of course, Rick Ross, let's take his mom to the Poconos. Um, it was, I was dying I, when I heard that. I was cracking up. But um, and uh, so, but like the Poconos and like the Endless Mountains and and out where Donnie is, like Pine Creek. It's and like where 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 Grindura was. It's all gorgeous. It's you know all the all the way out across Pennsylvania, out where the natural lands ride is, like the um that that um and and, and, and um uh I'm, you gotta cut you gotta cut that uh <laughs> Evan why can I I'm like blanking you gotta cut this part uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that anymore so we'll just back you gotta cut that. <laughs> It's it matters not. Um, the, the 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 endless mount the endless mountains, uh, all the way up Pine Creek, all the way up to State College, all of that is so amazing, and it's just you know people don't realize, and I think it's just like this mine scarred area or you know, like a bunch of hillbillies, which it is, uh, but it's it's absolutely gorgeous, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, um, yeah, check it out. Come out, PA, PA Wilds, you know, all that stuff is unbelievable. Now across all three events, I'm assuming we're going to hear a little da- different answer to this. 
if you had to give a bike setup for Crosscut and a bike setup for Lulac and then one for Staruka, what would Flannable. they look like? <laughs> Flannable, you know, Flannable across the board. Um, so I would tell you this. Lulaka, so we didn't get to talk about too much about Strucker. I'll gonna, uh, come back in a second on that. But Lulaka was founded on a steel touring bike with 28 Cs. And you can do that on that bike, no problem. But it's much more comfortable with nice 40 C tires on there, uh, with a wide range of gearing and hydraulic brakes and those things. But we've had literally everything except for we, we realized we have not had a unicycle. And we have not had like a rickshaw or anything else like that. But we've had a tandem. We've had fat bikes, single speed road bikes, actual like one of my buddies did it on like deep dish, uh, like tri wheels one time just to show that he can do it on that. Um, you know, so yeah, so he's a nut. He's a nut. Uh, but, but there's a, there's such a wide variety. It's bring, bring the bike you're comfortable on. And I think so like the ideal setup for Lulaka, I feel. Um, is of course is of course a, a gravel bike, right? Because I like having the brakes, the strong brakes. I like having wide tires. I like all those things. But the the, the ideal bike for Lulaka is up to you, right? It's up to you for all of them. Mm. Um, I would say Struka. If you try to run a road bike, you'd be out of your mind. You'd or or you'd lose all the feelings in your head because <laughs> the Struka is the hundred mile route is eighty six ish miles of gravel, and I, I would lose my mind if I were on bouncing off of that all day, but I'm also a big guy. Right. So like me riding forties is like 120 pounder riding 20, riding 28s. Yeah, so if you, if you look at relative, you know, relative size, so someone might be comfortable on, on a, on a road bike out there crushing it or a cross bike. Um, but yeah, I mean like it's nice. The, the Strucka might not need the widest gearing. There's some, there's some good Hills, but not as much as Lulaka and Lulaka is a blend of, paved quote-unquote paved roads the northeastern pennsylvania idea of a paved road especially after the winter is up to your interpretation just like art is um but then and there's also gravel there's a little bit of single track but don't bring your bike based on the single track it's it's walkable uh and then like the quote-unquote paved roads you better be on your toes because those paved roads have craters in them uh that would stop a truck so because it's post post winter up there because you know late april is still winter in northeastern pennsylvania um, it might be 70, but it was, you know, snowing the week before we've had snow on the Lulaka course in the past. Ooh. So man, the right, the right, the right bike is the right, the one that fits you, the one you're comfortable on, the one you can spend a hundred miles riding. And that's, you're, you're not going to knock your teeth out, chattering them off, off on all the gravel that's up there. I feel like we kind of bounced around all over the place. Staruka. Um, yeah. what are the, what are the, what are the distances for that? So we're, we're working on a, on a we're, we could do a 40, uh, definitely. We're do, definitely doing a hundred. We're going to do the same. We're trying to do the 40 metric 7,500, right? I think those are, okay. I mean, that's the, the sweet spot, uh, for all of them. They all haven't been developed and all not on the site. I think they're on bike reg. Um, but I don't have maps for every single one of them yet. I'm still doing a little bit of, uh, I was out a few weeks ago doing some scouting, uh, with a good, with a good friend, trusted advisor. Uh, Elena, we were riding uh, some of that stuff up there and, and uh, just making sure that things worked. And then we kind of explored a little bit and checked this out and, oh, that hill looks better than that hill and, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, we did some riding around when it was beautiful a couple weeks ago. So the 100 route is still working. We're still a work in progress. So I think it's pretty pretty close to nailed uh, with our last ride. I just want some stuff I've never seen before. I want to actually put, put tires on. Um, and then the other ones are coming along, so we'll have those all pub- all published uh, hopefully very shortly now. But yeah, it's sticking with the forty metric seventy five hundred. I think people like those. And the hundreds on the website. Hundreds on the website. Yep. Okay. Yep. What should be there already? What's the date for Staruka? Man, ask me hard. Ask me is the it, hard questions. May tw- May seventeenth. May seventeenth. Okay. Got it. Yep. So you got an April. You got a, a mid late April. You've got. Oh, you got a late April, sort of a mid May, and then sort of a mid June kind of thing happening. Yeah. Nice. And then hope, and then I'll sleep. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a lot for an event director to do three months back to back to back and and before school that's out as well. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it, buddy. <laughs> so luckily Lula can knock on what is 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 nailed, right? Like we we've got pretty pretty close. People know what's going on. Uh, and we've got a great support crew. Um, you know, I mean, I would, I would love to have 300 people at each of these events. I'm sorry, I, like Strucka and, and, and at, um, Crosscut, but 
reality has been, we've had like a hundred, 150 people. And I've been doing this long enough that I can manage that with a couple people, right? With, with some great, great folks I have who know how to like move between places and like know all the shortcuts and all that stuff. So yeah, we'd love to have everybody, right? Um, and, but some of them are a little, a little bit lighter lift at this point. Um, but we can definitely make our, get our, our folks activated if we need them, uh, right? So when we get more people, we'll, we'll have them out there, but I'm not, I'm a little nervous. Um, but, uh, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, I think, like I said, Lulaka has a lot, a lot going, a lot of moving parts, but a lot of people are in their place to do those things. And we're, we're doing some work with that. And again, with the help of the, the Keystone Mountain Bike team, it's, it's great to have folks on the ground, folks who are know what to do. And, and also the, the, with the kids having the ability to, to, uh, you know, use, use the, use those hands and also, uh, train them to, to do these things. So once we keep rolling, I think we'll be okay. This year might be a little tough. I might be, I might be sleepy. Uh, I don't know if I'll make every event I want to make uh, in the spring, but I think we'll be okay. And we're working really hard now to make sure that it is as smooth as possible. Well, I know three of them that you'll make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yes. Any any Hopefully. shout outs for um, event sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all, we've all, we've so since day one, Susquehanna Brewing Company has been with us. Uh, we were their first event they ever sponsored, uh, and so they're, they'll be near and dear to us forever. Um, so this went to brewing company and grab some of that this weekend, uh, for your holiday celebrations. They make all kinds of stuff and it's all great. Um, reload bags, of course, uh, reload has been with this, uh, God, I've been, <laughs> I've been carrying a reload bag on my back since 1997, I think. Um, so I, re- reload has been with us forever, uh, which is awesome. Richie components, Richie bikes, um, stands have been with us since the start. Like all these, all these folks, um, man, giant Richie stands going back to the list uh and then we've had like lancaster beard company who's like a, a rider who who does this uh we've had uh nittany mountain works um man I mean, everybody i mean we have we've had we uh muck off uh we'll we'll be working we'll be working with with trek this year coming up um so i mean like all sorts of different folks have been involved over the years keswick cycle has helped us out for years and years and years um and i know i'm missing someone i'm sorry if i'm missing you but we we love all the stuff we, we have from, and that's been one of the things we've always been so proud of is that almost everyone walks away with something uh you know we've, we've had a, a pretty epic uh gift table uh or, or a raffle table for years industry nine sorry industry nine uh if you're out there, there you uh, industry nine industry, industry nine hooks us up um yeah so i mean we've been uh doing great stuff and, and with our, our partners and sponsors uh Kuat, uh, another one that comes to mind. So yeah, po- folks have been really awesome uh, throughout the industry, and um, and even like local folks. Like, hey, can you throw this hat out that I make? Great, yeah, we'll do that. You know, like we want to be involved in in all that, and you know, getting stuff getting stuff out there and showing off what we do. That's a strong list. That's a strong list. Strong of, of thanks industry been, folks. Been doing, been doing it for a little while. <laughs> so. <laughs> so if folks wanted to find out more about any of these events, where would they go to do that? Cliff View Productions. Uh, so cliffviewproductions.com is your best bet. It has all three rides listed. Uh, and if you look at, if you search on bike rides, you can find all, all of them by their names. Uh, they're all listed on bike rides. Taruka Crossing, um, the Cross the Third Metric Century, and the Lulaka Waiko Hundo. I'm sure if you Google any of those, you'll get to the bike rides likely first. But Cliff View Productions gives uh, more information and uh, might give some pictures and stuff like that. We're working on, we're, we're building out more of the site, doing some work on the site. Uh, which has been great, um, you know, work, working with some some old friends in the, in the media industry that we we're, uh, we're, we're, we're they're they're coming back into the bike bike, bike media industry at this time. So we're, we're working with some cool folks doing doing that and uh, making sure uh, our we look good on the on the on the web. So I, I will I will make this deal with all of our listeners. I will go do the Google homework and find the bike reg links for each one of those and put them in the show notes. So I appreciate the that. Oh, the, the thing is, they're yeah. just their name. It's 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 uh, L L W H V eleven is is bike reg uh, for sure on that one. Don't tell people how easy my work is though. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't share the secret sauce. You could do you could do, you could do all the googling. Uh, you sound like my students. I can uh, Google. I I'm can. so glad your students even attempt to Google. Mine just give up. You know, they're like, eh, sticks to stick. Can you Google math yeah. though? Yes. How can you Google math? Yeah, photo math. Yeah, it's all, it's all out there. Everything's out there. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Hey, Pat, thank you very much. Um, well, man, thank you, you all. You, you got to line up. Um, June comes around, and I'm sure that you are 
a happy man, both full of, of, you know, joy for all the things you've done, but also looking forward to a little bit of time off at the end of that, that <laughs> three month run. Hey, you want to stick around yeah. for this or that? We have uh, a- <laughs> that's why I came. Right? <laughs> that's what everybody's been saying. I, I have yeah. um, a Thanksgiving themed um, oh, and Joey okay. wrote, Joey wrote them this week. Oh Lord. He did oh them. Lord. Exactly. Oh Jess. Lord. <laughs> Fantastic job. Standard order. Uh, Pat, you get to answer first. Jess, you're up next. Then me, then Joey. Hey, real quick uh, yes, for sir. the teachers and Googling. The last class I took, which was ended during COVID, mm-hmm. was a sociology class. The professors sucked. They took everything word by word off some website. So I could Google anything. So and literally, he, literally like copy paste. He plagiarized uh, the website to make the college level course. Yeah. Ugh. Yep. The final was so it's easy. Ter- <sighs> it's terrible how much it's terrible how much it happens and people get paid for that crap. It, but like they're not, you know, they're just I was recycling using, garbage. Using my resources. I, I yeah, well, yeah, that's what you're supposed to yeah. do. I did well in that class. That's what you're supposed to do. Because Google. You anyway, did well, but did you learn anything? I actually did, but there is some stuff because it, I feel like some sociology stuff. Uh, no matter what your answer is, it's still wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I got closer to it. But uh, yeah, I'm ready for uh, this or that. Sorry. No, oh, no, no pleasure at all. Pleasure at all. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? I'm ready. Mm-hmm. First item, number one. This one's kind of easy. Tacos or turkey? Turkey tacos? Oh, <laughs> no. uh, it's legal. I will allow it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd take, a, I'd take a, a, a taco anytime. Uh, I'm kind of a I, I kind of love tacos a little too much. Um, I'm definitely going tacos, like turkey. Pfft, you know, like oh, you're not a fan of the turkey I at mean, all. I like like turkey, like cut up on a sandwich, but not like a hunk of turkey, like a, like a big old chunk of turkey. I, I'm going to go with tacos as well, just simply because turkey makes me sleepy, just like it's supposed to. I think you know, and and we just don't have it enough. You know, I, I'm going to go with it. Although we did, we did, we're cooking two turkeys this year. And the first one was cooked today. We smoked it on the smoker, spatchcocked it, and smoked it. So a nice smooth turkey. I did taste that. It was delicious. But I'm still going to go with the tacos. Joey? Wow. I thought I'd be like the only person picking tacos. No. I, yeah. No, there's uh, a reason No, why. tacos rain everything. Yeah. But, <laughs> Clean sweep of the tacos. But for you Thanksgiving folks, is uh, check out Maddie Matheson's Thanksgiving leftovers. Mm-hmm. He takes stuffing, potatoes, gravy, maybe a little gravy, and turkey, chops it up almost like making a crab cake, mm. fries it. Looks freaking delicious. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Wawa so, also has the gobbler out, which yeah. is a yes. bowl of stuffing, turkey, mashed potatoes, and gravy. I totally tried to convince our family one year to just do Wawa. For Didn't you do Cracker Barrel one year? <laughs> we did do Cracker Barrel one year. Yeah. So that's the dream. Yeah. Um, yeah, tacos. That was, uh, I think that might have been for, yeah, it was Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving. Yeah. It was, we always we've had some weird years of late. This year's going to be a huge family shindig. Huge. Huge. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> second item. We Tacos won the board. Uh, second item stovetop or homemade stuffing? Homemade stuffing. My Easy husband ball. loves stovetop, but. I like homemade sauce, homemade stuffing. Um, my mom has to make one with celery and without celery because mm. most people don't like celery in our family. I love celery. Um, but besides all of this, we do penne and vodka sauce before the turkey. So I usually just stuff up on pasta and then the antipasta, <laughs> which Joey gets very confused about. What's an antipasta? <laughs> so, uh, it's the opposite of pasta. Exactly. It's, it's so, antipasta. Uh, I usually I just know. eat as much pasta as possible. I my uncle used to make this oyster dressing stuffing. Um, oh, so good, so good. But I'm gonna say, you know, the stovetop, the ease of preparation. I mean, it's just really hard to beat, and you never get stuffing like outside of like these two holiday seasons, like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I don't understand why, because it's so delicious. What's your choice? Well, well, you're not going to have consistent stuffing. Uh huh. But stovetop will give you consistent stuffing. True that. True that. I yeah. could eat stovetop all day with a little gravy. Yeah. I mean, I'll drink a lot. It's so much sodium. Yeah. But it's so good. You drink the gravy? <laughs> I would drink, I could drink KFC gravy like 
Well, t- <laughs> <laughs> like it's his beer. Yeah, I love gravy. <laughs> He's smother me in gravy. <laughs> Nobody's going to smother you in gravy, Joey. Well, what's that? What's that line from Super Troopers? Like you smother me in gravy? Before. I don't know. I don't know. God, what I would do for oh. some KFC gravy. <laughs> I know that was a big uh, South Park thing, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah but it's KFC, true. Yeah. You lost that bike part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, stovetop, that's pretty solid. So you were the only one that went stovetop, right? This is only on air. Yeah. Not anywhere else. I like my mother in law's stuffing versus my mother's. Ooh. <laughs> that's the first, one of the first nice things. He doesn't say nice things about my mom at all. Wow. Good job, Joey. Uh, also, yeah. It's a step. It's uh, a step Jersey, Jessica. Jersey Thanksgiving is very confusing. Allow Joey a step in this direction so that you can begin to heal. <laughs> we have like four meals before Thanksgiving in Jersey. It's, <laughs> no, it's so bad. The pre meal meal, the pre 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 meal. Like three sit downs <laughs> before a turkey. Okay. Next item. Would you rather keep a turkey as a pet for a year or have to kill the turkey you eat for Thanksgiving? <laughs> Wait, let me read that one oh. more time. You rather I got you. keep a turkey as a pet for a year or have to kill the turkey you eat for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I know this is Joey's because he talks all the time about wanting to kill his own turkey for Thanksgiving. He, does. he wants to hunt he them with a bow and arrow. He talks know. about this. Yeah, I um, as as a long as a a recovering vegetarian, uh, I'm still not quite okay with with my my hunting abilities. So I would uh, I would definitely hang in with the turkey. Although they're mean, uh, but they're kind of cool. Like if you study them as far as like their the communities they live in, and like they kind of like check on each other. Super stuff, smart. They're, pretty, they're really really smart. They're supposed to be our, our national bird, right? I mean, yeah, instead of the ben eagle. Yeah, so, I wanted to make yeah. the turkey the national bird. Now we have like a yeah. uh, scavenger <laughs> eating trash yeah, off exactly. the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> trash eating birds. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, so I, I, I'd hang with the turkey for a year. Yeah, I'd definitely hang with the turkey for a year before killing my own bird. Yes, I would also not kill my own bird. What would you name the turkey, Jessica? Turkey Lurkey. <laughs> I came up with that really quick. There was no thought process. I was all. just watching that Golden Girls episode when Turkey Lurkey is like a part of the play. So I really <laughs> like your TV viewing. Now you're watching like, Frasier tonight in the, the Golden, Golden Girls. Girls. You're in for it, Joey. I I would say I would want I don't I wouldn't want to actually kill a turkey. Who um, wants to kill something? I mean, it's such a big bird. What a mess. Exactly. What a mess. But keeping a turkey as a pet for a whole year, they're disgusting birds. Have you ever seen them when they've been penned up and they get all mangy and oh, they're kind of gross. Well, do you want to give him a bath? Like No, but I well, you should have thrown in there you have to keep the turkey as a pet in your house. <laughs> oh, no, no, not in a house. No, no birds in a home ever. No, never. Sorry, bird people. There's never. Um, a pic. This is funny. There's a picture of a bird on top of our print, a copier at school, and it says "free to a good home" because our dogs don't like it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Who is giving away birds? Joey. Um, this is a tough one. Yes, I have expressed interest. I I do not like. Uh, this is sounds bad. I don't, maybe I should open up on this podcast. Okay, please do. Um, I don't like I don't like harming animals or the mm-hmm. fact of it. But sometimes questions whether I want to eat meat or not. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think about it all the time. But I do love to cook, and that's my that's my like uh, my conscious talking half the time. Okay. But I've wanted to shoot a turkey with a bow and arrow. <laughs> For so long. We <laughs> talked about that so much. Like, like didn't you want? I don't know want to, if want to like, make your own bow and then. No, 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 shoot no. I want to use like a straight long bow. None of this like compound recurve, all that stuff. I want like a straight long bow. You want to hunt it? I there, I don't know if it's some like primal instinct thing or like we could just send you a, de- a decoy. Like, yeah, we could just get yeah. to get to it. And just call it gobbles. Yeah. We, we could take a butterball, put it behind the decoy, and then let Joey go out and throw a stick at it. Um, I don't know. Like, I've only bird hunted a few times in my life, and uh-huh. I felt horrible each time. The pheasant, because yeah. like I went pheasant hunting and stuff, and they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. The birds taste great. Uh, what the hell? But, um, what, what over there? You know, and like with the pheasants, I still have pheasant feathers from when I shot a pheasant 20 years ago that I tie flies with. Yeah. Um, so, like, you know, you kill it, you eat it, and then you use every part of it for me. I used to love the dove hunt. 
And, and I've dove hunted, and it's there's nowhere to, you can't find anywhere to go to do dove, it anymore. Dove hunting's like catching perch. You do so much work for a little yeah, bit of meat, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I. But the problem is, you keep the turkey for a year, and then you got to slaughter it. Now you're friends with it. Oh no, see, I couldn't. Do see, it. that's where you, all three of you are. I couldn't. Do um, I, I, I don't like. As this, soon as you I call like something by a name, it's a pet. It's not dinner. I'm get, yeah, Jerry, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm going with the geriatric turkey. We'll, we'll do it a nice <laughs> burial. He might actually he's getting ready to kick it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I got a free range, fully organic, whatever turkey from uh, my friend Jackson has a farm. Oh, really? It's in the fridge. I bet you that's that a thing ain't that's cheap. Good. So I'm hopefully I cook that thing well. <laughs> you better. But How you gonna cook I, I had this chicken like that, like free range chicken. Whatever you call it, best chicken I ever had. You putting it on smoker? Yeah, everything's humane. Everything. There's no chem. There's none of that crap. So that Got that's it. kind of the route I'm gonna start going, and then eat less meat, oh. more fish. <laughs> new, new side to you, yeah. I will, yeah. Nice. Um, last item, this or that. Eat a burnt Thanksgiving dinner, or constant family drama without alcohol. Ooh, you I, I, it I, tough. I, yeah, I I need burnt dinner anytime. I, I'm I'm very very lucky that my family's mostly sane, and we've been. You know, I hear other people's stories, and and uh, I am always very grateful. And I realize as crazy as they may seem to us, is we're, we're we're super tight, super cool, you know, and we uh, don't have all that drama. Although once in a while, I do start fights, but um, <laughs> it's it's generally a logic it's generally a logic question. Um, but no, it's a hundred percent no drama. I I can't stand that stuff. I don't know why people mm-hmm. deal with that. I, I don't know why people. I don't want people to allow it in their life at all. Uh, and I would I would eat, I would eat burnt rodent off the uh, uh, instead of the eagle uh before i deal with a uh, family drama especially no alcohol mm. jessica well my family is only made up of drama uh <laughs> last year my brother threw up at thanksgiving because he was so hungover that was two years ago and then last uh, year was drama last year was drama there's always drama at our house and I don't enable it in my family either. That's why I moved to Maryland, and they're still all in Jersey. <laughs> like, there is a very clever way of that happening. So it's, um, it's going to happen for you. The drama is going to happen one way or the other. Yes. So why eat the burnt food? Just suffer the drama and get a good turkey. Yeah, actually, okay. like I just hang out with the kids. The they're the best part, you yeah. know. Um, the adults are the drama. At what age do the kids in your family turn into little? Joey and I are at kids. We're <laughs> you're still at the kids table. Hell yeah! Oh, right 100% on. Hundred percent put me there. Right on. Right. The adults are lame and boring. Um, I don't. I don't have really either of these things. God, where do you guys live? I don't. I don't really have the family drama. Um, I, I don't. I you know, but eating a burnt Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, there's always the possibility of some drama. This one's, this one's a, a tough up, a tough toss up. I hope you have so much drama because you're so big of a Thanksgiving dinner this year. <laughs> God, that, why would you? I don't want you part of the drama. Anybody. I don't want any drama. No drama. So I would eat the burnt Thanksgiving dinner, hands down. I would much rather than have any drama introduced. I would too. I will but eat. It's just inevitable. It just I will happens. eat burned poofed chicken. Ah. Joey, you have no choice in this either. Yeah, I would go with Bert. There's always drama in Jersey. It's a foul, it's a blast because <laughs> if you're not part of it, you, know. you sit over there with a bourbon in your hand and kind of. <laughs> uh, my mother-in-law poured me a drink before anyone came over last year, She's like watching TV. Right? I don't even know well, what is she. I don't even know what she gave me. She's like, Joey, like she's. I'm the only person she gave whiskey to. <laughs> nice. Right. Well, you're not getting any of that because you have the long hair and the beard and. You've gone full on hippie now. Yeah, we'll just be in the garage doing other stuff. Yeah. Anyway, don't, we can't talk about that on this. Podcast. No, no. My brother, my brother-in-law is such a straight edge. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> but I'll drink Jack. He has Jack at his house. Okay. I'll, I'll drink Jack and burnt turkey. You know. So whose house do you go to? Do you go to your 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 mother-in-law? Do you go to your mom's? Uh, it rotates. Oh, it's, it's so it travels. It my traveling, brother-in-law that we're going mountain biking drama ride. show. Okay. We'll ride like at seven, eight, nine in the morning. Okay. Take a shower and go to his house for Thanksgiving. Oh. It's basically like the Kardashians, but we're not that wealthy. <laughs> That's how I explain my family. Like no. I've explained it to people in my where I work with. Like that's Here, how I explain it to people. Here's how it is, Pat. Like other than me, my father in law, and my other brother in law, everyone is in the school system up there. In the last three years, oh. has been miserable yes. for the three yeah. of us. 
Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> and yeah, it just gets very dramatic quickly. <laughs> teachers have been on when a te- lot of When pressure. teachers get together, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, and combine the pressure of the last bit. Everyone up there years. is in the school system. Yeah. All right, y'all. It is about time for us to shut this thing down for it's the week. 41 minutes past my bedtime. Do you guys have anything? Anybody have anything that they want to add? Um, Jessica says got her hand The up. cutaway sale works. Uh, I actually bought that with my store card, I figured out. So now I really have a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> so, yeah, Lori is going to ask for my receipt for that thing. Uh-huh. Thanksgiving shopping. But I did ask Philip to return it. No, that's, um, I think that's about it for me. Right on. Uh, have fun if you go to the Hush Money ride. We won't be there. Yeah, sorry about that. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Mid-Atlanta Gravel, Travel, and Dirt. If you've enjoyed the podcast, maybe consider joining our Patreon family or jump over to the Shopify store. You can find the link through the website, buy some stickers, buy some T-shirts, check out, make sure if you like the new ones. Joey doesn't like the Gravel Life one, but that's okay. Um, Joey, how can folks get in touch with us? I like where you went with it. My neck, a little, uh, you know. Yeah, we're going to work on it. Yeah. Um, we are at graveltraveldirt.com and our Instagram is at midatlanticgtd. Pat, how can folks find you and your rides? You can find us at cliffviewproductions.com uh, uh, and like a hundo. If you just Google me, as Google they it. say. Google. Yeah, it. Google me. Mid Atlantic Gravel Travel and Dirt is recorded this week from right here in Joey, Jess, and Blake's <laughs> kitchen all the way up to God's country. In Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania. Thank you, Pat, for joining us. It is God's country. Thanks for riding along. Until next time, do good, be nice, go slow, respect others. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye. Love you, bye.